down the line in the future who you'd like to fight? Well, uh, I think you're going to know the answer. That's uh, Hamadouche, Maiva Hamadouche. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and now when I lost to her in amateurs, I'm like, wow, if this was a pro fight, you know, like a big one, 10 rounds, I think yeah. it would be just amazing, uh, amazing to, to, you know, to be part of and to watch. So I think that's my biggest goal. And the rest... Our I channel wanna... posts regular interviews from female professional boxers from all around the world as well as videos from press conferences and fight predictions. If you want to see more videos like that, hit subscribe. Hi everyone, I'm Sasha from Women's Fight News and today I'm joined by Maria Malanitsa. Maria, how are you? Hi everyone, uh, hi Sasha, thank you for having me, I'm really good. <laughs> good, good. Um, what have, you, have you been training today? Uh, yeah, I had a client this morning because I also train people and then I had a mm -hmm. session with my coach like mm -hmm. hour and a half and that's it for today just easy sounds it <laughs> <laughs> and so are you a pt as well then yeah yeah i do uh, pts and a class uh, uh, boxing classes but just a bit not too much because it, it takes a lot of energy of course so i do it just a bit <laughs> yeah. yeah i suppose the benefit is you can be flexible as well can't you with your work and fit it around your training yeah, yeah, that's really good. And just the, the people you, you meet while you work, they can be really, really nice. So, and they really mm -hmm. appreciate what you're doing. And it's, it's a great, boxing connects people. Yes, yeah. it does. That's one of my favorite bits about it. You get to speak and meet to people that typically you would never normally meet. Exactly. Yes. Um, so obviously you're Croatian, but you're currently based in London, aren't you? Yeah. Well, uh, th this is a long story. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to try to make it very short. I'm, <laughs> Cro <laughs> I'm Croatian, but I used to live everywhere. I used to live in um, Paris, Amsterdam, a little bit of Thailand, a bit of Ireland, uh, London for years. But now for the last year, I was part of the Croatian uh, boxing team for Olympics. So the last year, less than a year, I was just in Croatia with my family and with Croatian teams, so I was just living there, preparing for qualifications. And I didn't qualify, so I decided to come back here, and now I'm looking to turn pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you had um, a tough qualifier, didn't you? You, you faced um, Hamadouche, didn't you? This is also a long story. <laughs> so, I love it, go on. <laughs> actually, first time I met her uh, was in while I was living in Paris, it was seven or eight years ago, and I used to do Muay Thai, so my boxing was really not good at that point. And I remember her, maybe, probably she doesn't remember me, but one day she came to the gym and we sparred, and she broke my face. It was really tough sparring, so I was bleeding, they stopped the sparring, and this is how I remember her. And then uh, last year, we were supposed to have the qualifications in London, and just the night, uh, I knew I was meant to fight her and I was ready for it, you know. And then just the night before the fight, the whole event was cancelled because of Corona and we had another year. So for me, it was a good thing because I knew who I'm facing. I, I prepared well and the fight, uh, they, they say it was really close and I think it was really close and exciting fight, but I wasn't lucky, so I didn't qualify. Yeah, I mean, for anyone who hasn't seen that fight, I really recommend it. It was just start. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. And from start to finish, I was exhausted watching it. It was just nonstop. I was like, are they going to take a breath? Like, what's going on? Could not believe the pace that you both maintained. Yeah, I also don't believe. So the only good thing from that fight that I really saw that how much I can push so yeah. I'm just happy for that, you know, but she, she took the most out of me. So it was a good yeah. experience. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously you didn't come away with the win, but I mean, yeah. she, you know, she's a world champion. Yeah. Um, but what an experience. And like I say, I think other fighters will watch that and think, oh God, because you've got such an engine on you. Like no yeah. one can outwork you. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was more actually my heart who wanted it. So it was just something magical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it was it was a fantastic fight. Um, so obviously you've come from that and now you've decided to turn pro. 
Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, there is also a long story. I changed a lot of uh, countries, a lot of coaches and everything. So now I'm going to turn pro with my uh, coach, Pete Liggins. Mm -hmm. And we are just, uh, I just made my license. So we are just taking a bit of time. Uh, we're just going to build it up starting from now. I have a manager, so uh, ringside agency. So I hope the things will get started soon. But, you know, I'm patient. Yes, it's quite a good time though, because obviously with COVID, everything really came to a halt. So now it looks like everything's opening back up. That's true, but also I must say with the COVID, uh, everybody was uh, not happy. But with amateur boxing, I must say I'm really happy how how many fights they, they, they got us. So I was traveling a lot, you know, I don't know, just for tournaments in, uh, in the Euro. But we had a really good many fights, I think I had during the COVID. So, so that, that's good. Yeah, more than most people. So uh, you won't be uh, rusty, at least when you get in the ring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, prior to boxing, um, you done K1, didn't you? And you were very, very successful in it, well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I used to do a lot of K1 and Muay Thai while I was in um, Paris, Amsterdam and a bit of Thailand. Uh, I won a few belts um, there and I had like probably around 30 professional fights and I really traveled the world with all these fights and it was a really amazing experience. And then... I just thought, wow, boxing. I never thought of boxing, just by boxing. And actually, my hands were not so good while I was doing K1 and Muay Thai. My, I think my biggest weapon was my kicks. So I want to challenge myself. And then I started to do boxing, and I want to go pro before four years. But I'm happy I didn't, because I would probably... I, I, I wasn't good as I am now, you know, because with amateurs, you, you just get that experience. And sorry, I got lost now. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. And so with the K1, I mean, um, you said you won, you won titles as well, didn't you? What, what level did you end up getting to? Uh, well, I was uh, the best um, of my, um, how do you say it, of, of my career in Amsterdam. Uh, yeah. I won those four, uh, four belts. Two of them are world champion. And one is European, one is K1. Um, European Muay Thai, and I won also uh, kickboxing full contact European Championship. And um, so, what was the question? <laughs> no, that's what I wanted to know. That's brilliant. Yeah, because... yeah, yeah. And around thirty fights, I would say, uh, professional level. It was a class fight, you know, without um, obviously without uh, protection, and you just yeah travel and fight on different galas yeah because that experience as well is gonna fit in perfect obviously with boxing you've got that experience of obviously traveling as well and and being you know in that big environment where you're you're winning titles and you know fighting under pressure as well yes yes you're right from that point I think uh, this experience helped me it, and it's going to help me with boxing because I really like that part of um, being in a gala, excitement, people, uh, lights. I really enjoy that and I miss that with amateur uh, boxing. But yeah. also I think uh, um, kickboxing and boxing are totally different. And I think it would be even better for me if I just started from the beginning with boxing. You know, because mm -hmm. in kickboxing is a bit different with the stance and just everything is so different. So from one point, maybe it would be better just to, uh, to start with boxing. But then from the other hand, it is how it is. So I think just this part is going to be advantage for me. Yeah, definitely. Like you say, the mental side of it um, yeah. obviously will help. Um, so what was the decision for you turning over to boxing? Well, um, I still don't know the answer because I'm thinking <laughs> some, when people ask me and I'm like, I don't know. It's like you have a best friend and you end up getting drunk and you end up together and you just know that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I needed a change in general in my life, you know, and I, I just chose boxing and then I saw how hard it is. And that made me uh, curious about how far I can go. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. even did a bit of MMA, 
but that okay. didn't work out very well. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> good. Uh, I won one fight, but I lost two because you really need to put so much time into the jiu-jitsu and wrestling and judo. And for me, I just wanted to experience that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different disciplines in MMA, isn't there? That you, it takes so long, doesn't it, to master each one? Exactly, exactly. It's just too much. I mean, of course, if you're just going to do that and if you if you're doing it from the early age, it's possible and it's also very popular. Mm -hmm. But I have a friend in Thailand. Uh, this is uh, she's uh, she's doing um, Latve. She's a world champion in Latve. It's like you have just the reps and you're doing elbows. It's like Muay Thai, but you can do headbutts also. No, she she's really amazing. This woman, I used to live and train with her, so that's another level. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's. I mean, I'm all. For, I love combat sports, but when you bring in headbutts, I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit too much, yeah. <laughs> um, with your boxing, I mean, you've you've been sparring some. I mean, amazing fighters, haven't you? So you've had like um, Tasha Jonas, Ellie Scottney, I think Lisa Whiteside as well. Yeah, Ramla Ali. Ramla Ali, yeah. Yeah. So, what? Uh, well, I'm in London for already like four years. So I get to know all these um, fighters. And I used to spar with them even before, just with Tasha and Lisa. It was just uh, accidentally last time I was here, I was just looking for sparring and I just wanted to spar. So I just texted uh, or somebody gave me her number and then we agreed and I just came to Manchester and we sparred and yeah, it's a really, really amazing. All those girls just to spar with them. I think this is the, the way for me to, to progress. And this is the way where, where I'm learning and pushing myself the most. So this is the best thing about UK. That's why I'm here. Yes, because I mean, obviously, we're very fortunate in the UK to have so many fantastic boxers. Exactly. Yeah. So with that, like, what did you gain from that experience, especially when you've got someone like Tasha Jonas, who's, you know, obviously been very successful in the amateurs, very successful, you know, in the pro ranks as well. What did you gain from sparring with her? Well, we just sparred once uh, together with Lisa, but it was just amazing and Tasha, first of all, I think she's a really great as a person. Her, uh, she and her coach, they were really nice to me because they just met me. And as a fighter, I think she's just awesome. She's on a long distance. She's really great. Inside, we had a really good war. She's really strong. So I think I, I gained a lot just with one sparring. And, and I hope I'm going to do it again. I'm actually sad this time I didn't contact, contact her because I'm going back to Croatia on Sunday. But hopefully when I'm back... I'm going to do it again. Yes, brilliant. Um, so you mentioned that you've like traveled a lot and lived in a, a lot of different places by the sounds of it. And they're all like the capital cities as well. <laughs> um, what's, uh, what, what's happened along their lines? Have you moved for like a challenge or what are the reasons behind going to each place? Well, I think it's, um, it's something inside me that uh, makes me want to see uh, things. And also is a challenge uh, because I like to be thrown in unknown, you know, so I need to find my way. It's just making me making me tough through boxing. Of course, I have boxing because I think if there was not boxing or kickboxing, maybe I wouldn't even have done it. But like mm -hmm. this, I use boxing as, let's say, excuse just to learn from different people. And then on that way, I'm meeting people. I'm just growing as a person. So, uh, for example, I stayed in Paris for some time and did Muay Thai, but now looking back, it was really hard for me. And uh, I'm just thinking how I managed to do it. For example, now I would never do it again because it's not necessary. And then mm -hmm. when I saw that I don't like it anymore, I just Google, okay, what will I do? Where will I go? Then I'm like, oh, Amsterdam, that's close. I buy a ticket and I go there. And then I find my way, you know, where you go to the gym, ask around and from day to day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I love that though. I yeah. really love that. That's such a fun way to live as well, isn't it? Where you're not tied down to the one place. 
That's true. And you know, they say, when you're going to settle down? I say, yeah, I'm going to settle down. But now it's the time because later it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. Why, why settle down now? You yeah. know, obviously all these amazing experiences and traveling to these different places. Like, why would you not do that? Yeah, you know, it can be hard, but it's totally worth it at the end. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, what, what's the worst thing you can always just go go back home or, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's not, not much risk, really. It's like you say, you yeah. can just go home and then that's fine. You've tried. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. Um, do you have any fights coming up this year? Um, Hopefully. We were, waiting, uh, we were waiting for worlds in amateurs boxing, but now I hear uh, th that they're going to be postponed for the next year. So this was the plan, but now I'm really hoping pro game is going to start to roll. So I really hope by the, in the next month or two months, my manager, he asked me, so, so when, are you, when are you ready if I find your fight? I said, tomorrow, just give me some. So, so I'm staying ready, patient, but I really hope and I have a feeling something will come up soon. Yes, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you as well. And um, because there are a lot more shows coming on as well. There are a lot more pro shows and obviously crowds are allowed back. So that helps. That opens more doors as well. Definitely. That, that's amazing to hear. Yeah. And um, what weight do you fight at? Well, uh, as an amateur, I, uh, I'm a lightweight, 60 kilos. Mm -hmm. uh, now with amateurs, they also add, uh, added some weights, which is really good thing. So it's 60, 63, 66 and so on, but in pros, I think I'm gonna be 59. That's a super featherweight, right? Yeah. But I'm ready to move in between. Yeah. And super featherweight, I mean, that's my favorite division at really? the minute. Yeah, it's just got so many amazing fighters and there's so yeah. many from, yeah, and there's just so many big fights to be made in that division. Do you, um, have you got your eyes on anyone like down the line in the future who you'd like to fight? Well, uh, I think you're going to know the answer. That's uh, Hamadouche, Maiva Hamadouche. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and now when I lost to her in amateurs, I'm like, wow, if this was a pro fight, you know, like a big one, 10 rounds, I think yeah. it would be just amazing, uh, amazing to, to, you know, to be part of and to watch. So I think that's my biggest goal. And the rest, I just want to, I just want to fight. So whoever it comes, I would be happy. Yeah, I mean, 100% for the Hamadouche fight. And like I say, anyone who's seen your previous fight um, a few months back will also vouch for that. That will, um... And also, it's an exciting fight just because of, like, you've now got that little history between you. You've obviously had that epic fight. So that'll be so exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm really curious what, what's going to be with it. <laughs> yes, definitely. And, you know, this, like I say, the Super Featherweight's got so many fights. And so I suppose that's the benefit of being in a division like that. You're not short of fighters. So, you know, hopefully once you get the ball rolling, there'll be um, yeah. lots of opportunities for you as well. Yeah, I really hope so. Yes. Yeah. And um, what's your like future goal, like long-term goal in boxing? Like what, where are you wanting to get to in the sport? Well, um, in pro game, I would really love to have a few belts. I would like to be a world champion. But I, I cannot hide. Still, my dream is to go to Olympics. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, whatever happens, happens. If I really make it big in pros, maybe maybe at that point of my life, I'm just going to be like, you know, enough. I'm not going to even try to do the Olympics. But now when I, at least I think I was, I was really close. So this is also like a big goal for me. And the good thing is uh, the next Olympics are in three years, not four. Yeah. So, so that's good. And I'm going to be 33 in um, November, but I don't mind. I, you know, like the girl, even I, now in this uh, Olympics, I saw a woman, they're nearly 40 and they're still fighting. So I think that's not a problem. So the goal is just to keep learning, just to, you know, give my best and then to see, to see what happens. Yeah, and like you say, age doesn't seem to be an issue, especially in the women's game. Um, like you say, we're seeing amateurs going into the late 30s towards 40s. Same with the pros as well. Yeah, yeah. In, in amateurs, you have a restriction till 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in pros, I think you don't. But to be honest, uh, I'm not sure if I'm 40 that I, I want to fight. 
Probably I would wanna, but I I don't I don't think I will. <laughs> Maybe like five years. I, I give myself like five years. By the time yeah. I'm so quick and I cannot even imagine what will I do, you know. <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> yeah, and it seems to be like the age. I mean, we've seen like I mean Heather Hardy. I think she's going on to like thirty nine ish now. So we are seeing fighters hitting thirty eight, thirty nine, and. I think that's what's nice about it. There's no rush at times. And you see in other sports, there's a lot of pressure to do things very, very young. But I think as you get a bit older, mentally, you're more ready for these big challenges. That's so true. Mentally, also physically, I think. You know, I, yes. I, I feel I feel actually now the in the perfect state. Mentally, okay, I think I, I can even go a bit... <laughs> mentally there is always place to, to progress but also physically I feel strong now mm -hmm. you know what I mean I don't want to say old old bones but you know I just feel that I matured so so I, I think it's a it's a perfect age it also depends I think from person to person for example mm -hmm. I developed uh, very very late when I was a kid I think I was 15 when I just started to be becoming a woman you know so yes yeah. and the yeah, way of no. life of course yeah exactly no that's completely right like you say it's the strength side of it as well like you see a lot of fighters more so on the men's when they come in young and they look like boys still and yeah. um, obviously with the women's game we do see women come in a little bit later slightly older um, yeah. but you do see the difference even with I mean for instance like Ellie Scottney um, when you've seen her fight against others, even though she's very, very good, she wins. You can see the physical strength difference at times because obviously she's a lot younger. You are so right. Well, she she's a friend of mine and she's a really good boxer. But yeah, I, I must agree with what you what you say about the. And also, this is what I said to Tasha. Uh, I said I think maybe it's strange, but I think when women when they have a child. I just think they have that extra, like one percent, may, maybe even more, five percent. You know, a woman can 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 give uh, can lift up the car to save the baby. So yeah. I think they are also they have a bit of advantage on. on yes. That. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard people like other athletes say that before. Like once you've had a baby, like maybe. you can do anything, and your strength just. It just increases because once you can do that, you can do anything. <laughs> Maybe I should invest in my career and get a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what everyone needs to do. Maybe that's the hidden <laughs> secret. <laughs> um, Maria, thank you so much for your time. Um, I wish you the best of luck in your training. And I'm keep my fingers crossed that you get a fight soon. And um, if in three years' time you still want to go to the Olympics, I hope that happens for you as well. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you so much for this. No, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I, well, we'll keep in contact, but I hope, uh, yeah, hope to see you in the ring soon. Oh, I hope so too. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. See you. I'll see you. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel ready for new content dropping all the time. Also, give Women's Fight News a follow on Twitter and on Instagram.